At the beginning of the film, we are introduced to a spy named Mark. He has just returned home to his wife Anna and their son, happy to finally be with them after being on an espionage mission for a long time. His first meeting with his wife seems normal, but in Mark's heart, he feels as though there has been a shift in their relationship. They hardly talk on their way home and don't share the bond they did before his departure. It is almost as if Mark returned home to a stranger in his wife's body. At night, the two make love in hopes of mending the strange shift between them, but it doesn't seem to work. After the deed, Mark admits that he hasn't been a good husband. He expects to get a reaction from Anna, but she is surprisingly calm. She claims that they are not a good couple anymore and goes to sleep with the same thought running through her mind. The next day, Mark is at his office, debriefing his bosses who seem very satisfied with his performance. The impressed bosses wanted to keep working with Mark, but he has other plans. He refuses to work any longer because he wants to focus on his family, which is on the verge of breaking. With a suitcase filled with money, he returns home, only to find an empty apartment with no signs of his wife and son. While waiting for the two, he falls asleep on the floor until a phone call wakes him up. Upon answering the phone, Anna informs him that she is downtown and needs some time to think about their marriage. A hundred thoughts corrupt Mark's mind and make him think that his wife is having an affair. Subsequently, he loses control and rummages through her belongings and discovers romantic postcards and letters, all sent by the same person. Not wanting to believe what he's seeing, he calls Anna's friend, Margie, who confirms that Anna has had a long-term affair. He further asks her about the man's information, but before she can say anything, the line is cut. The phone rings again, and this time, Anna is on the other end, telling him she wants a divorce. A heartbroken Mark confronts her about her affair, and she keenly admits to it. Anna and Mark meet up at a restaurant to settle the terms of the divorce as per Mark's wish. He reluctantly turns the apartment and custody of Bob to her and agrees to give her an allowance to look after Bob. The conversation leads to an argument and soon the topic of Anna's affair is brought up. Enraged by her dishonesty, Mark decides to take his anger out on multiple restaurant chairs. In the next scene, Mark hits the bottle to cope with his difficulty. After about a week of his destructive drinking spree, he wakes up to find himself in his hotel room. He finally sobers up and recovers from the withdrawal symptoms and goes back home, unable to stay away from his family. There, he finds Bob alone in a dirty apartment, whom Anna, for some reason, has left alone for days. Bob shows Mark a ship that Anna's lover gifted him a long time ago. After cleaning his son up, he waits for Anna, who gets home some hours later. She instantly starts explaining to Mark that she doesn't usually leave Bob alone like that. The fatherly love in Mark returns, making him decide to stay to take care of Bob as he can't leave him under her care. He urges her to break things off with her lover if she wants to stay in this house with Bob, but she starts to act erratically, slurring her words and talking to herself. Despite everything she did, Mark still loves her, so he calms her down, bathes her, and tucks her to bed before going to sleep himself. At midnight, he is woken up by a call from a man telling him that Anna is with him. The call then cuts off, and he then finds the note she left telling him she went over to her friend's house. Realizing she is back to her duplicitous self again, Mark gets her lover Heinrich's number from her friend and calls him. However, he gets flustered to learn from Heinrich's mother that Anna hasn't been there for weeks. The next day, Mark drops his son Bob off at his school and meets his teacher Helen, who looks identical to Anna. He mistakes her for Anna until he realizes that she has different hair and eye color. Still unsettled, Mark goes to Heinrich's home to get Anna and finds that she isn't there either. Heinrich claims that he has changed Anna and made her more accepting of who she truly is. When Mark hears this, he tries to beat up Heinrich as he cannot accept that the way she is right now is her true self. However, Heinrich seems to know martial arts and ends up beating up Mark instead. At home, he discovers Anna as her old self, happily spending time with Bob. He interrogates her about her whereabouts from the night before and she lies through her teeth saying she was at her friend's. 
Mark defies her and they start arguing back and forth until she slaps him and smiles hysterically while trying to leave. She proceeds to leave the house, but Mark starts hitting her due to all the pent-up anger and frustration to the point she starts bleeding. Anna finally runs off the house and almost gets hit by a truck while walking in the middle of the road. After the truck passes, she has a manic expression plastered on her face as she continues to walk. Mark lets her go and returns home where Margie arrives and tries to flirt with him. Later on, desperate to find out what Anna is truly up to, Mark hires a detective named Zimmerman who is supposed to keep an eye on her every second of the day. The next day, Anna returns home and starts doing the chores as if nothing from the past few days has happened. Mark tries to talk to her about her strange behavior, but she doesn't answer well. While Mark keeps shooting questions at her, she just continues to nod with a strange expression on her face. He ends up crumbling due to all the emotions and Anna notices it, causing her to take the electric knife up to her neck. She starts screaming when it hurts her and a worried Mark stops her and dresses her wound while consoling her. Later, Mark hurts his arms with the same tool. Anna comes to bid Mark goodbye and glances at his injury. In a strange turn of events, she nonchalantly says that the wound doesn't hurt, and Mark agrees. As she leaves the house, Zimmerman starts following her and notices her strange behavior. While she is on the train with the groceries she just bought, a man steals from her bag, but she stays silent. Zimmerman finds it strange, but continues to follow her until he discovers the apartment she has been living in. After informing Mark about the apartment, he goes on to knock on her door. Receiving no answer to the doorbell, he decides to walk in and finds Anna looking scared. He pretends to be a property manager and inspects the apartment, opening all the curtains to let in some light. Anna, yet again, starts acting erratically and offers him some wine, which he declines. Continuing to inspect the house, he reaches the bedroom and finds a horrible-looking tentacled creature inside. Before he can process what he saw, Anna sneaks up behind him and kills him with a wine bottle she just broke. On the other hand, Helen visits Mark's apartment to talk about Bob and his grades. She helps Bob take his bath when the doorbell interrupts them. Mark answers the door and finds Heinrich, who has come to look for Anna. This time, Mark claims that he knows her address and taunts Heinrich, who later leaves defeated. After that, Mark goes back inside and discovers Helen telling Bob a bedtime story. She even helps Mark with the household chores, which eventually leads the two to get intimate. The next morning, the lover of now-dead Zimmerman visits Mark and inquires about him. Upon finding out he was at an abandoned apartment building last night, he goes to the flat and discovers the tentacle creature in the bedroom. At that moment, he notices Zimmerman's body on the floor, lifeless and half-eaten. Disgusted by the sight and saddened by his lover's death, he tries to shoot Anna but misses. She loses her mind yet again and starts acting maniacally, beating him before stealing his gun and shooting him to death. A few days later, Mark receives a package from Heinrich, which contains a videotape. He plays the tape, which contains Anna's monologue about good and evil. Again, Anna appears in the apartment and continues her erratic behavior while rummaging through her stuff. She reveals to Mark that she had a violent miscarriage in a subway while he was away. It is revealed that Anna had a nervous breakdown in the subway as she screamed and cried going berserk. It resulted in a miscarriage as she oozed blood and fluids from her orifices. Learning about everything she has been through, Mark lets her go after asking for the ring and the watch he gave her. Then he calls Heinrich's home and conveys Anna's address to him through his mother. He wants his wife to be taken care of, even if it is by her lover. Without wasting a second, Heinrich visits her apartment on his bike and shows her a pack of pills that is supposed to heighten her senses. He wants her to take them and make love to him right there. He also gives her the flowers which she proceeds to show to someone in her bedroom. When Heinrich goes to look at it, he finds the same bloody tentacled creature and is horrified at the sight. 
As if it was not enough to petrify him, Anna shows him the decapitated body parts of her victims that she has been keeping in the fridge. Then she starts hurting Heinrich with her knife. Terrified, Heinrich hurriedly flees from the apartment, bleeding through his clothes. When things calm down, Anna returns to the creature and takes her clothes off in front of it. Somewhere else, Heinrich calls Mark in a state of panic and asks him to meet him at the bar. Mark waits for Margie to arrive home to babysit Bob before he goes to Anna's apartment. There, he finally discovers the fridge and is shocked at the monster his wife has become. A panic attack hits him as he begins to twitch and finally calms down after opening the window to get some fresh air. Finally deciding to put an end to all this, he takes the detective's gun and goes off to meet Heinrich. Heinrich tells him about everything that happened and says he wants to do something about her illness. Meanwhile, Mark deduces a plan to kill him, hoping to keep his wife's deed hidden. Inside the restroom, he hits Heinrich with a ceramic cover and stages his death in one of the stalls. He spreads the pills he found on him to make it look like a drug overdose and places his head inside the toilet bowl. After that, he rushes to Anna's apartment and sets it on fire to erase all the evidence of her wrongdoings. When he finally gets home after a long day, he is shocked to see Margie choking on her own blood after having been wounded by Anna. He moves her unconscious body into a room and discovers Anna inside the apartment. She helps Mark wash up as he is covered in blood without asking him any questions about it. The two seem to have come to an understanding of each other and make love on the bathroom floor. Mike has finally decided to run away with Anna to escape her crimes. A while later, Anna leaves Mark and is taking care of Margit's body when a phone call interrupts him. It is Heinrich's mother asking about her son. Mark pretends to not know anything about him and adds that Anna has gone missing too. He lies to her and assures her that he will ask Anna about Heinrich and let her know. He then takes Bob and leaves him with Helen. With all this happening, Mark is unaware that Anna has no plans to be with him. Even after all this, she still wants to be with the creature and has hurt everyone because she thought they wanted to take it away from her. He returns home and is terrorized by the sight that welcomes him. He sees Anna making love with the creature, which makes him leave the house. He visits Heinrich's mother and tells her that he knows where his soul is. The poor mother has accepted her son's death and takes some pills to be together with her son. The next day, as Mark wanders the street, his former business associates scout him to rejoin them. He returns to the apartment trying to avoid them, but finds that the area is surrounded by the police due to Margie's death. He threatens a taxi driver to take over the taxi and stages a distraction, allowing a lady in blue to escape in his car. Unfortunately, he gets wounded in the shootout with the police. Injured, he flees on the motorcycle but gets into an accident. He somehow manages to get into a building and is followed by Anna shortly after. However, it isn't just the two of them. From behind Anna emerges the creature who has perfectly transformed into Mark's doppelganger with green eyes and lighter hair. Anna is extremely happy as it was her idealized version of Mark. She happily smiles at a horrified Mark who slowly points his gun at the creature. At that moment, the police catch up to them and shoot the couple. Anna crawls onto Mark's body, picks up the gun, and from an unnecessary angle, shoots herself. Perhaps she wanted to be loyal at the end as her love for Mark was always in her heart shadowed by the creature's manipulation. The creature then threatens a passerby lady to show him the way out and flees through the roof. While he escapes, Mark gets up and jumps down the stairwell to his death. Back at home, Helen is still taking care of Bob when the doorbell rings. Bob, who exercises the intuition of a child, implores Helen not to open, but she ignores his pleas. Bob rushes through the apartment into the bathroom where he floats face down in the tub. The sound of sirens, explosions, and jets coming from the outside fills the air. The frosted glass door reveals Mark's doppelganger figure. Helen stares intently as her green eyes start gleaming. Helen seems to be Anna's doppelganger 
as she is the idealized version of the wife Anna could never be. And that's a wrap for this movie recap. Thank you for watching.